<laughs> if parenthood came with a GPS, it would most likely just say recalculating. Join Yulandi Becker and her guest experts Wednesdays at 11 a.m. for Bump and Beyond 101.9 megahertz of life. You are on 101.9 High FM. This is Bump and Beyond, and I'm your host, Yulandi Becker. This show is all about parenting. And today, specifically, we want to talk a little bit or a lot of bit about healthy eating during this holiday time. Holiday time for families often means busy schedules with numerous parties, get togethers, and celebration. Temptation is everywhere, and parties and travel disrupt daily routines. But isn't this what holiday is all about? Having lots of parties and drinking too much and eating too much and all those type of things. As adults, holiday time signal times for more drinking and eating. And our own bad habits can often filter through to our children. We are allowing more sweets, more takeaways, eating out, and not so healthy alternatives. And children, like I said, it filters through to their, (laughs) our behavior filters through to them. I mean, I, yeah, my kids smell chocolate when it's in the house. I don't know how, but they manage to do it. The problem with this time of year is that it can then go on for weeks because we're seeing lots of family and friends. We might be traveling. And if this is going on for a long time, it can have an impact on our children's mood and their behavior, their memory, as well as their teeth. And for some kids, the holidays really brings in a surge of desserts and treats and sweets that they might not normally have access to, especially if you're seeing lots of family, friends, and people always want to treat your children because it's holiday time and they always have like these Santa sweeties and these all sorts of things that they have available because that's it's the time for sharing and caring. <laughs> um, and because of the specialness of all the kind of foods that's available, I mean, my mom often gives us like a whole... Before we leave on holiday, she gives me like a box of cookies. But I'm like, I'm telling you, it's a homemade cookies, but it's a container of cookies that we take with on holiday. And some kids might feel inclined to eat continuously and seem a little bit preoccupied with eating while you're on holiday, especially if you're going to other people and having dinner and all sorts of things. Some kids get so preoccupied that they rather eat <laughs> than, than play. And they become really like overly concerned with eating and lots of eating is happening. And some kids like me, they are just prefer snacking to eating at meals. And this can be tricky to navigate around the holidays, especially when you've got lots of gatherings with family and friends with lots of different appetizers and things in arm's reach. So filling up on snacks can become a problem. And because children may, yeah, they might not have an appetite then for an actual meal. And again, mentioning myself, um, because I love, the saving grace for me is the fact that I, I don't have a big sweet tooth, luckily. But on the other hand, oh, a bag of chip and dip can go a long way for me. And it's the same amount of calories. So I'm very much looking forward to having a proper conversation with my guest today, who is Lisa Snaimine, who's a dietitian, a registered dietitian, and a mother of two. So we're going to have a really great conversation about how we can set up a little bit healthier eating habits um, for our um, for ourselves as well as our children during these uh, holiday times or these festive times because there are lots of parties, lots of get-togethers, grandmas, uncles, aunts, everyone who want to indulge. And again, I think we're all doing it and I think there is a, a goodness to it. I don't think it's all bad. In the end of the night, that's part of it. It is nice to be eating great food and drinks and having a good time with family. So I definitely don't want to take away uh, from that. But in the end of the day, maybe we can just do it a little bit better. This show is unfortunately pre-recorded. I am away. um, So you won't be able to be part of the conversation today. 
But please do give us feedback on the show, this show, other shows. Um, so be sure to send us an email on bumpandbeyond at highfm.com. I would love to hear from you. Give me some ideas of things that you would like future shows to be on in the new year. Um, some issues that you would want to talk about. I want to know what you want to know. <laughs> if parenthood came with a GPS, it would most likely just say recalculating. Join Yulandi Becker and her guest experts Wednesdays at 11 a.m. for Bump and Beyond 101.9 megahertz of life. You are on 101.9 High FM. This is Bump and Beyond and I'm your host Yulandi Becker. We are speaking today eating habits during the holiday time. Personally, I love eating more, drinking more, indulging during holiday time. Because normally in my normal life, I am exceptionally rigid and a planning fanatic with everything. It's it's a little bit, you know, I think I might drive a little few people insane with my um, planning skills. But that's why even with meal planning, I'm very, very specific how I plan meals. Um, and for the week, because my pet hate with my children is if they ask me what's for dinner, I cannot take it. So I plan very nicely my menu for the week. I have a little whiteboard where I put the menu for the week and I make my list for shopping from that. So it's very, very organized. It's also a very good tip to help organize and avoid what is for dinner questions because they can go, look, obviously this is only you're only able to do this once your children can actually read. <laughs> Before that, you might have to draw pictures. But it is very helpful. So when it comes to holiday, I don't want to plan my meals so strategically. I want to be a little bit spontaneous. And yes, that often then leads to too much snacking, too much eating out, too much takeaways, too much of the wrong things. And we're going to talk to Lisa Snayman just now about this specifically um, this overindulgence. And lots of kids are like that as well, where they're eating too much. But the reality, especially with smaller children, is that there is a lot happening during the holiday. And eating can become the last thing that children or your toddler is actually thinking about. Um, you are likely to visit family and friends that you haven't seen in a while, and you're maybe doing lots of activities, and yeah, the last thing your child's going to be thinking about is eating. Taking the time to eat might feel like an interference for your child. We would probably rather do a thousand different things rather than eating. This might especially be true if your toddler feels overwhelmed with portion sizes as well um, at holiday gatherings or with 50,000 different things available. And the other side of that is also that, especially if you're going to someone else's house, they might not have the food that your kid actually likes. So they don't want to try new things. And this could also lead to tantrums, meltdowns, because they're hungry and hangry <laughs> because they want to be eating, but there's nothing that they find appealing on the menu. This is especially when you're not hosting that can be a problem. At the end of the day, you have to remind yourself when it comes to your child's eating, it's like leading a horse to water. <laughs> you can only lead them there. It's not your job to make them eat. It's really that type of thing. Well, the same thing applies for your child. Even when it's a special holiday gathering and your relatives have put in so much effort to make the food beautiful and yummy, you can't force your child and rather just let it be. If you know your child is a picky eater, pack some snacks in that you know that they will eat. Have a variety of uh, things available that you know they will eat. And also let your family know that and remind them that this is a small kid that might not want to eat all these delicious things that they might perceive. But yes, that's the one side of it. The other side, which we're going to be talking about now, is the overindulging during holiday time. So I'm very happy to introduce Lisa Snayman, a registered dietitian and a mom of two that will be joining me. Hi, Lisa. Oh, lovely, lovely being here. I'm 
like I said, I've got a really bad habit mm-hmm. during the holiday time because I want to be spontaneous. That's the one side. I don't want to be over planning. But this often leads to like too much snacking. Mm-hmm. And obviously, oh, it's mm-hmm. if you're snacking and overindulging too much, you know, leading by example, mm-hmm. the kids are also eating chips, eating yes. dip. Luckily for me, I'm like, don't have such a big sweet tooth, but chip and dip, the calories are equally as bad, especially when it's with mm-hmm. a glass of wine. So, how how okay is it? <laughs> I want you to say it's okay. <laughs> yes, I'm not being led on. Yeah. <laughs> no, Yolandi, this is a bit of a loaded question, <laughs> I am afraid. So uh, from my point, I think you have to discern what is your wanted outcome. So if your wanted outcome is to actually lose weight during the holiday season, The question, is it okay to indulge, obviously poses a bit of a problem. But let's be realistic. Isn't it a goal or a realistic goal to say, okay, I weigh, argument's sake, 65 kilos. If I succeed in weighing 65 kilos at the end of this holiday season, I was mightily successful. So now you have to ask yourself, is it okay? Yes, I think it is okay, but you've got to offset the excess calories that you take in. So possibly, as you are now no longer in the office, desk bound in your chair, telling your dietitian that you just cannot get to the physical activity. Now you've got the time possibly for a brisk morning walk to offset the calories that you took in enjoying your favorite dessert last night. Or possibly when the children are playing cricket on the on the lawn, get up from your sun deck chair and possibly join In the activities, burn the calories. And by doing that, you may very well succeed in maintaining that weight, should that be the goal. So I think, yes, you can indulge, but what is your goal and how can we go about achieving this? So you're actually, what you're telling me is technically I should be changing my goal. (laughs) But anyway, thank you so much. We'll get more into it just now. If parenthood came with a GPS, it would most likely just say recalculating. Join Yulandi Becker and her guest experts Wednesdays at 11 a.m. for Bump and Beyond, 101.9 megahertz of life. So if you've just joined us, we are, you are on 101.9 High FM. I'm Yulandi Becker and I'm speaking to registered dietitian Lisa Snyman, who has just informed me that I need to have more realistic expectations when it comes to my end goal, when it comes to Mm -hmm. um, eating during the holiday time. And I think, like you said, it's important to offset those indulgence and being a little bit more active, Mm -hmm. which I I do think it is. What's the other way? Well, you can offset excessive calorie intake by instigating a flush. What does this mean? This means once you've indulged, you're not fat immediately. Just take a while. (laughs) The food is technically still in your stomach. So you have that golden window of opportunity to act. You could actually flush sugar very successfully from your system by timing your fluid intake when you indulge. So when I join you at a braai, I'm waiting for my invite, (laughs) I would perhaps enjoy something then i'll tell myself i want to enjoy maybe the dessert or no i think the uh, potato bake looks lovely i'm going to have something but i would then whilst i'm enjoying this meal still have a glass of uh let's call it empty calories water maybe a zero uh, drink a light drink a sugar-free drink because if i happen to eat and drink together i can very successfully flush some of the sugar because remember basically all food will become sugar So I can very successfully flush a lot of the sugar from my system before the insulin response kicks in and turns the sugar into fat. And then I've got to exercise it off come New Year. I like all these ideas. So drinking water, not wine is also now. So it's like (laughs) lots of my holiday is turning into something different very quickly. You're now mentioning the sugar and specifically now we're talking, we've been talking about how I have to 
like limit myself during this time. Mm-hmm. But also now, what about kids? Yes. How, how do we limit? How much sugar should a kid be having? Is it okay? Lots yes. of sweets for two weeks? What yes, are we supposed yes, to be yes, doing yes. here? Mm, I think it also depends on uh, everyone's uh, unique style of parenting. I suppose some parents would say it is okay because during the term we, we're very strict, so we indulge more and allow a bit more during the holidays. And other uh, parents would feel, no, you know what, it's a, it's a day-by-day balance game again. Um but also, I guess, depends on how long your holiday is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if it's only three account. days. <laughs> but again, sugar stays sugar. If you say, how much sugar should a child have? Sugar is sugar. Keep in mind, we've got four carbohydrates, fruit, vegetables, dairy, and starch. Technically, when ingested, will become sugar already. So you're specifically, specifically referring to refined sugar. So how much should I have? I think it lies in portion size. So a snack should be small. It should fit in your hand. So if we say, consider ending a meal with something sweet, I think it sort of ends the meal. It rounds it off. And some people like doing that. And my children will ask me after the main meal of the day, can we have something sweet? So possibly if you did not do your homework or the chores I requested you to do, possibly that will influence the outcome. But you can say, yes, you know what? We can allow this. Uh, Let's look at the portion size and uh, consider possibly uh, slices of fruit or then if it's going to be a sweet, keep it small. Why not share? Can we not maybe get um, a small size chocolate and share it between two siblings? I think there's maybe also a different principle that comes up here, which we can, everyone can learn from sharing. (laughs) Sharing is caring. caring. So I think that's something to consider. But sugar stays sugar and I would, uh, ideally refrain from uh, excessive intake of refined sugar. Oh, it's also excessive new. intake, but it should be allowed. Come on. Well, Life is all about balance. I can drink a glass of wine, I guess yes. they can have a chocolate. Yes. yes I, I agree <laughs> with you. Yeah. So that's the one side of it. Like I said, it also, I guess, depends on how you long you're going away. Or It's also not about always going away. The holiday time, if it's five weeks, mm-hmm. you can't be expecting... The, your kid to be eating or allowed to have a chocolate or whatever every day. No, I think we should have a balance and say there is something like a sugar-free day. So if I indulged yesterday, we had the family gathering, we had baked puddings, whatever the case may be, uh, possibly tomorrow, and this can be a house rule, we can discuss this, uh, you know, amongst the family members and say, okay, once we're having the indulging, you know, we're enjoying this fabulous meal with with the grandparents, but, you know, tomorrow that means it's a sugar-free day. Okay. So everyone knows the rules. And I also like during a holiday to say, let us decide on w- what we're going to indulge with. So you possibly allowed uh, in the span of a five-day stretch, you allowed four treats. So you can choose, is this going to be uh, ice cream on the beach or is this going to be uh, something different? I mean, this will be unique to every person. But then you can sort of keep count and say, okay, you know, I am going to turn down this treat in favor of something else because mine, um, we are allowed five treats over this or five five treats or four treats over a five or six day period. I think that's also something you could consider. Yes. So when I'm now, we also do like, normally we don't get a lot of takeaways. We don't go out for dinner quite a, a mm. lot or for lunch or whatever. So when we're on holiday, we also do like to go out for lunch. But then for me, the kids always end up eating. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, what? Fries and burgers. And standard uh, chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets, chicken, nuggets, nuggets, chicken straps, straps. All those, you know, the normal kid menu stuff. Yes. So- and it's always with fries. And my daughter loves tomato sauce. So she could probably eat tomato sauce with anything, As which is side, also not anything. <laughs> So so normally if I'm making chicken, she knows she can't even ask me if she's allowed to have tomato sauce. But with if there's fries, obviously I can't. But how do you then, or is it just the alternative is don't go out? (laughs) That's probably the first option. But how can we, yeah. Do, yes, it's such do better challenge. things at yes. a restaurant. Now, I think you're pointing out a big challenge for many pa- parents because dining out is a challenge with a very limited... Luckily, we're not menu. vegan. 
<laughs> Don't even start. <laughs> but I think with the, the options that we have on the kiddies menu, I think you've listed them all just now, but it's very limited in comparison to what's available for the adults, stark contrast. So I uh, I can advise possibly consider uh, not ordering from the kiddies menu. When you order from the adult menu, um, Variety is so much bigger. So, and then also portion size. So, you could actually decide to get grilled chicken with roasted veggies and a salad uh, from the adult menu and share it between two siblings, sharing again. But I think that will give you more variety where uh, dining out ideally you would go for the roasted or grilled protein and uh, not crumbed uh, particularly. And then to say, I need a vegetable. So some children would prefer actually cooked vegetables and most of the restaurants on the adult menu will offer roasted veggies. I feel a little stupid that I've never thought of this. (laughs) (laughs) This is actually something you can can do. And share from the adult menu and then you've got such a better choice variety, healthier. Well, dining out, remember, by nature isn't necessarily the healthiest. But I think that's a good idea to share and then make better choices because life is about balance. You've got to go out, you've got to enjoy a meal. How do we make the best choices? Have your fluid with a meal. And the rule is we don't drink liquid sugar. Mm. So when we order from the adult menu, what are you going to order as a, as a, as a drink? Uh, it could be a glass of water. It could be a sugar-free, calorie-free, fizzy drink something to consider and i mean that is really something now that you mentioned that it's like it's also really embarrassing actually to tell this but um i used to allow my children when they were smaller not even now i don't allow it anymore apple tizer yeah because i thought it was like it's apple yes. i thought it was like and then i actually saw that there's more sugar in apple tizer than there is in coca-cola so so for all of you out there, read the labels. <laughs> read. Familiarize yourself with what's in the product. Yes, yes definitely a lesson. Okay. Okay. So now I can't, I have to manage my expectation. Mm-hmm. I can't drink wine while I'm eating stuff. I have to drink water. got to offset the extra offset calories. The, so mm-hmm. my holiday is changing. It's changing slightly, mm-hmm. but the, at least I'm going to look the same when I come yes. back. <laughs> Now, what about this? I know we talked about the restaurant. Now, the next thing is, for me, the next culprit that we have to address, um, the evil. I don't want to say evil because I might get really bad, but grandmas. Uh, okay. <laughs> How do we manage that? Mm. Um, because my mom, for instance, I actually, oh, we actually had fights about this already. Where I'm like, you can't, every time you see my kids bring sweets and Mm. give sweets how do we manage that how Mm. can we is there a good answer to this or you saw please say you're also struggling with it (laughs) you know what i think um number one open communication where uh the parents take the lead and have an open communication with the rest of the family and say you know what we laying down not rules but basic principles uh, in terms of uh, establishing healthy eating habits. And we would prefer that sweets not be just given. So always I I feel a grandparent should have this, the right to treat, but it should not, it should be given to the parent and the parent can then decide when is the appropriate time to enjoy the sweet. Because not necessarily when you arrive at grandma's for lunch, you arrive at 11, receiving your packet of sweets would be the best timing for enjoying that. So I think definitely grandma should be able to give, but the responsibility of deciding when the street should be taken lies on the mother. And then to say, okay, we're going to thank you so much for this lovely gift. We will enjoy it after we've had our lunch. I see. I, I feel like that I've done right. But I mean, it was first a fight. But anyway, so what are like, I mean, it is a different, the holiday season year for us is very different for if you're in Europe or something this time of year. What is good holiday meals? What is, Mm. what should be part of, if you're at home, brying or whatever, what is, what is a good, what should you have as a good meal, a healthy meal, better Mm. options? Yes. I think we're fortunate in South Africa, the Southern Hemisphere, we've got the lovely summer weather right now, which enables us to, number one, be outside and be active. So that number one. Uh, and secondly, when it's so hot, we uh, fortunately we don't have to 
uh, eat such heavy meals. Uh, we can get away with a lighter uh, version of the, the Sunday roast. We can still have the brine, but we can get away with a side salad, you know, and keep it really colorful with all the lovely vegetables and fruits that we have available. Not mayonnaise on everything. There you go. <laughs> uh, a, a vinegar-based uh, salad dressing or, or lemon juice even, even, because lemon juice modulates your blood sugar response. So by, if I add that to even while... Uh, having the brice uh, sprinkle or drip this on the meat or adding this to the salad or even in the glass of water that I'm drinking, it will actually help temper my blood sugar response, uh, which will eventually aid my body in not producing too much insulin, hence fat production. So that's just a little trick you can get away with. Also, um, if you think of a rat, what about a rat? If we grill chicken, we can still have the brine because you know the men, they all want to you know, no. start the sort of the fire and have a bra. We can still do that. It's roasted chicken, and we can, uh, you know, can we can use this roasted chicken with lovely salad filling or stir fry. I, I honestly do stir fry on the on the fire as well, and then we can fill a wrap with us, keeping it a bit lighter. Where we cut back on the calorie counts, and most of the chain uh, uh, supermarkets out there do stock low carb uh, options on the wrap. So something to consider: a platter's. You know, I love, you said yourself, you love having a platter. And on the platter, why can't we suggest that we swap some of the crackers, starch-based or chips, high in fat again, for vegetable crudités? And, you know, ditch the cream cheese dip for maybe a low-fat um, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese. Oh, and juice it up with a bit of chopped herbs. That's, that's a good idea. So I think we can, you know, uh, South Africans, we very... Um, original and we can come up with so many ideas with for, for sides healthier sides keeping it light the weather's wonderful I'm the already actor. getting a little bit hungry now I have to say <laughs> and again remember you can get away with a basting it doesn't have to be dry chicken based chicken or even marinade we just would like to cut back on the sauces yes. oh, so okay. we can still marinate we can still baste we cut back on the sauces that's where the empty calories lie Oh, great. I'm learning a lot. I'm now starting to look forward to this holiday slightly. If you've just joined us, I'm Yulandi Becker and you're on Bump and Beyond. And I'm speaking to dietitian and mom of two, Lisa Snyman, about how we can enjoy our holiday, but still look the same and uh, or come back looking the same. <laughs> and that's like the next thing that I wanted to talk about is now, what if you don't manage to keep too active you're sitting watching netflix eating mm -hmm. chips what if and, it goes uh, wrong what if it goes wrong ah. well you obviously have the opportunity to turn things around in the new year or after this it's called week. new year's resolutions <laughs> so with the momentum of the, these resolutions we can really strike while the iron is hot so i believe that if you've gained weight recently by acting quickly, it's much easier to get rid of the weight, getting to the pre-gain weight, getting your shape back quickly, you know, then let this postpone and only by March trying to fix something prior to your April holiday. So no, I think once you're back immediately, take it up again, uh, back to your active routine and you can definitely make big changes again Cutting back on the empty calories, the liquid sugars, the excessive starch, half your carbohydrate. And I'm not a big fan of cutting out the carbs. Will I have pasta as a dietitian? Definitely. But I will have a cup full and I will have it as a tomato based. Maybe have it with a salad. Will I have some pizza? Yes, I will. But I'll have maybe two slices and I'll have a side salad. So I think balance is key. So when January arrives, quickly get back in the saddle, get back to your good routine and fix what went wrong over the holidays. Is it really a possibility? Let's see. <laughs> if parenthood came with a GPS, it would most likely just say recalculating. Join Yulandi Becker and her guest experts Wednesdays at 11 a.m. for Bump and Beyond, 101.9 megahertz of life. If you've just joined us, you're on 101.9 High FM. I am Yulandi Becker, and I'm speaking to dietitian Lisa Snyman about getting, first of all, about how you can deal with your holiday feeding and keeping it healthy for the entire family, not to overindulge too much 
And that I've really gotten some really great ideas. So thank you for that. And then we spoke a little bit now. If all went wrong after the holiday, mm-hmm. how to get back into it. And you said the quicker you get into it. But then mm-hmm. why would it be a good idea to see a dietitian? Mm. You know what? Um, I think it's all about routine. So you have to know what should you do and what shouldn't you do and when. And I think a dietitian is uniquely positioned to to assist you with this. So not only does she have that medical background, so should you possibly have a medical background uh, such as gout, you're suffering from gout or hypertension or there's slight insulin resistance, uh, the dietitian can take that into account when planning your routine, your meal routine, your diet routine for a set period to achieve your expectations, your goals that you're setting to achieve. Uh, also, the dietitian is more than just a diet planner. Uh, we also uh, act as fitness coaches, training coaches. What type of exercise should you do for your body type? I mean, let's be honest. We can't all think it's a one size fits all when it comes to training. Uh, it's actually customized to your unique body shape. Then we also take into account uh, financial uh, situation. I mean, you will not advise the same products or the same diet to two patients in a, in a stark contrast when it comes to financial means. So you take that into account. So lifestyle coaches, we we, we act on uh, and supporting the patients. And then again, regular contact is needed. So if you think you're going to download something from the internet, one size fits all, and it's an unrealistic plan, you're going to be rudely awakened. <laughs> so regular contact is needed. And this is where a dietitian comes in. And you know, after COVID, the online business has just boomed. So it's so much easier these days. I mean, you can have a quick session with your dietitian during your lunch break in the office, not even setting foot out the door. So I think keeping in touch with the dietitian, refreshing the diet, updating the ideas and customizing that based on that patient's specific needs and requirements. I think that's where a dietitian is such an impact. And also, I mean, they always say that you should have a lifestyle rather than a diet. Oh, and I, I think, agree. and that I really think that if you have that support system mm-hmm. of actually changing your lifestyle than just doing a diet, it's you guys should change your names from dietitian. Face it, <laughs> a diet implies a short term action. Yeah. Where uh, afterwards you revert back to your old habits, and the key is you've got to change the baseline. You've got to mm-hmm. change your habits and be realistic. It's definitely doable. Yes. So. Last but not least, what's realistic expectation-wise? First of all, for holidays, expectations, Mm -hmm. and afterwards. I think it's very reasonable to be able to keep the weight that you have achieved by prior prior to going on holiday. Uh, I think it's reasonable to say, can I be able to keep it off, not gain, come out the same weight? Yes, I think that's reasonable. If you then say, okay, I did have a slip up or two, I have gained, obviously it will not be as much as you not trying, you're not endeavoring to make any changes whatsoever and just full out enjoying your holiday. So I think it's worth it. And then if you focus on weight loss after the holiday, say, okay, let me fix something. It did go wrong. I want to lose some weight. I think 800 grams to a kilo a week, but keep in mind body sculpting, not overall weight loss, you want to change the shape. So body sculpting, and that gives you that visual uh, impact. You've lost weight and everyone can see it. So not just losing weight everywhere, sculpting um, and say mainly stomach fat you want to take off. So yes, I think that's realistic. I'm looking forward to my holiday now. I feel a little bit mentally prepared for it. I thank you, Lisa, for joining me Lovely today. Lovely being here. Thank you for the invite. How can people contact you? Who are we available on the web? On my website, Lisa Snayman Diet, and also on Facebook, Lisa Snayman. Yes. Great. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> Lovely being here. If you've just joined me, this is 101.9 High FM. If you missed it, please have a listen to our podcast on highfm.com. All about our conversation of how you can make it a little bit healthier for yourself and for your children during the holiday time. As parents and caregiver, it is important to remember that it's not your job to get your child to eat. So if your child isn't interested in eating at the particular family meal, it is 
okay. Don't just let your child eat all the time. It's important to remind your child that they will have access to food and that foods they are wanting to eat will be available during the designated meal times and snack times. Sticking to a consistent meal and snack schedule can help your child avoid a snacking pitfall or decrease their, uh, it can decrease their desire to graze and not properly eat. Again, we need to lead by example here. Make sure your child knows what to expect ahead of dinner meals with family or friends. So, and also maybe expectation management for your family and friends as well. Tell them that you'll be sitting down together to eat dinner, to have family time, but they don't have to eat everything. They don't have to try everything. Be realistic also for yourself. The sheer amount of food during the holidays can be super overwhelming for picky eaters, not to mention the number of dishes that your child might not even know about. So again, managing your own expectation and also grandmas, let your mom know. It's like, sorry, my kid just doesn't like pumpkin. It's not bad cooking. Hunger by itself can increase meltdowns. Remember that as well. So if you're going to someone else's house and they are planning the meal, you don't know when the meal is happening and whatever. Make sure to pack some snacks. If your child is hungry, of course, it can increase meltdowns and add things like overstimulation. You're going to have a recipe for disaster. So to help decrease the risk of meltdowns, make sure your child gets adequate rest and sleep and that you have snacks available. Sticking to naps and meal snack routines as much as possible. And that's going to require some planning. So make sure that when you're going out of the house, that you are have you have water with you, that you have snacks with you, just like when you're at home. If your child is asking for snacks after meal, um, is a pattern that is typical. Even after, if this is like a pattern, even when you're not on holiday, it means she needs a little bit of firm boundaries. Don't allow your child to eat after you've had the meal. They need to eat during the designated time. Without this, food can become a free-for-all for kids, which again doesn't allow them to regulate their appetite properly to improve their overall nutrition. In the end, like I mentioned, it is not always easy <laughs> to regulate these things with our children. <laughs> If parenthood came with a GPS, it would most likely just say recalculating. Join Yulandi Becker and her guest experts Wednesdays at 11 a.m. for Bump and Beyond, 101.9 megahertz of life. If you've just joined us, it's 101.9 High FM. This is Bump and Beyond and I'm Yulandi Becker. We've come to the end of our show today. It's been a good one all about getting back into healthy habits, even if you've managed to go completely off the bandwagon. And I hope that if also helped you create some expectations as well as ideas of what you can do to stay a little bit healthy during the holiday time. And like Lisa said, if you didn't manage to do, or you do indulge a little bit, remember to offset it, have lots of activities with your family. In order to help your child have a positive eating experience, it's important to remove labeling and simply let your child be who they are and enjoy food. Remember, lower your expectations. Having more realistic expectations for your child, especially around food and what she is reasonably able to do at mealtimes, can make things a lot less stressful for everyone. Respect your child's autonomy. Remember that your child is ultimately in charge of whether or not they want to eat of the food that you've provided and how much they want to eat. It's not your job to get your child to eat. Maintain your feeding responsibility. Even in the midst of changing surroundings and different routines, your responsibility for feeding your child still matters. When you can reliably and consistently offer meals and snacks, you can help things go easier with eating for your child. 
and keep things in perspective. The holiday season can be hard for a lot of reasons. Like I said, grandmas, and I love grandmas. My mom is so great. (laughs) If you find yourself reaching the end of your rope, losing your patience or having a difficult time for whatever reason, it's okay. When it comes to your child and eating, remind yourself that the holiday season doesn't last forever. Focus on making memorable mealtime experience over what your child is eating, as this will have more of a lasting impact. It's been so great. Catch this podcast as well as lots of other great podcasts on our website, highfm.com. And join me next week as I talk to psychologist Samantha Williams about managing depression and anxiety for the whole family during this trying festive season. It's all about enjoying the festive season, enjoying the holiday time now. We don't want to be anxious. So join me next week for that. As Judith Martin said, The family dinner table is the cornerstone of civilization. And those who graze from the refrigerator or in front of the television are doomed to remain in a state of savagery. Dinner is just better when it's eaten together. None of us know the best combination of things to do for our children. More often than not, as parents, we just close our eyes and hope for the best. Some might call this faith. Thank you for joining me. Until next time. Enjoy your day. (laughs) If parenthood came with a GPS, it would most likely just say recalculating. Join Yulandi Becker and her guest experts Wednesdays at 11 a.m. for Bump and Beyond, 101.9 megahertz of life.